you know, a priest, and a priest will minister to you. So God was not living in people anymore. He was coming to people from outside. So he will send somebody. He will send somebody. He will send somebody. But when Jesus came and he died, he said, I will send to you who? The Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. I will send you the word, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Now, look at it too. The Bible says, Adam and Eve ate and died. Who died? It was the Spirit of God. In them. The spirit, not their own spirit, though, because man became a living soul. Read Genesis 2 7. Genesis 2 7. And the Lord God formed man. And Lord God formed man. Of the dust of the ground. Of the dust of the ground. And breathed into his nose. And breathed into his nose. The bread of life. The bread of what? Life. Of life. Uh -huh. And man became a living soul. Look at it. The bread of life came. Man became a living soul. That means man. So, be, add a spirit of his own. There is the spirit of man. And then there is the spirit of God. The spirit of God is the breath of God. That gave life to, to, the, soul what? to the soul of man. Mm. So that means man himself had his own spirit. And then inside that spirit, within that compartment, was the what? The spirit of oh God. God. What used to happen is that the spirit of God always communicated with the spirit of man. So that man will be able to know exactly what God is thinking. If not, how did Adam name all the animals? And that was the And animal. exactly the name he gave to them was the thing that was in the mind of, mind of God. Uh -uh. That means he was thinking the same way God was thinking. Okay. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 16. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 16 says, for who has known the mind of Christ? He said, Who has known the mind of Christ? That he may instruct him. That he may instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. But we that are born again, that are redeemed of God, well, we have the word. The mind, mind of Christ. Christ. That was the mind that Jesus, uh, Adam and Eve had there. And before. They could instruct God because they could think exactly like God. They could understand what God is thinking. That was what Adam and Eve lost in the garden. And that is what redemption has brought back. At that time, when God was speaking, man was speaking. When God was silent, man was silent. When God was moving, God was a man was moving. The spirit of God and spirit of man had a connection. The only thing that was not really connected was the mind. Because man had his own mind. That was why when the devil came, the devil did not come in the form of a spirit. He, come, he came in the form of a thought. He came in the form of what? Of a thought in the mind of the woman. This thing. Ah! It's looking good for food. Looking good. Ah, but God said, <laughs> we should not eat all this. No. He said, we are not, sure. we are not going to show you that. It's like God doesn't want us to be like him. <laughs> so it was a thought within the mind of the woman. And when she saw that it was good for food, and then she took it. <laughs> and what? Ate it. And then her eyes opened, and she saw nakedness. What happened is that her eyes got blind. She could no longer see the kingdom. So when she opened her eyes, she was seeing nakedness. She was seeing too much. That's why the Bible says, except a man be born again. You shall not what, be able to see. Means you will not be able to see the reality of the kingdom. You will keep seeing nakedness. Mm. So when you give your life to Christ, what you are doing is that you are closing the eyes to nakedness. And you are opening the eyes to the kingdom. Opening the eyes to the kingdom. And what, do, what this does is that immediately that happens, something happens, a reconnection happens. That spirit, that breath of God that we lost in the beginning is replaced. It, it, it comes back. Now, the spirit of God that we lost in the beginning and the spirit of man that has been around with us, both of them don't understand the same language. The, 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 the spirit of man understood iniquity because for many years, that's what has lived with. But now, the Holy Spirit is now coming to take his place like Adam said. Now, and the only thing it does, it speaks. And when he's speaking, he's speaking to the spirit man. But the spirit man 
cannot understand. In the beginning, in the upper room, when the first came, they say he landed upon them as thongs of fire. And all of them began to speak with what? New mm. songs. What does it mean? Immediately the Holy Ghost landed. He noticed that the spirit, the spirit man was very ignorant. Completely ignorant that he doesn't understand the voice of God. He could not speak the language of God. So what does he do? He boycotted the spirit man and acted as our spirit man. You know, it is the spirit that gives us all that. So instead of the spirit man, so it suppressed the spirit man in the upper room and began to speak through the man, through the 120 that gathered. So he began to speak directly from them. So as he was speaking, it was like God speaking in heaven. And man was like a, a speaker. Sounding what God was saying. They were speaking in other tongues. And the tongue they were speaking there was that they were speaking the language of many people. That's what happened in the upper room. Many people were hearing their, their own language being spoken. Why? Because God landed and suppressed the spirit man and began to speak. And what that means is that inside you, inside you and me, are tongues of men. Many. Too many people are connected to your, to, to, to your destiny. Correct. Too no. many dangerous people are connected. If you fail, you did not fail alone. You, you have failed the generation. generation. So too many people heard the, the same multitudes gathered, and they were hearing, the, and they said, "This is the mighty work of God." And that was the beginning of speaking in tongues. But the truth is, you have to pray in tongues now before you can speak in tongues. That's why most times, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, what you are able to do is to pray in tongues, not really speak in tongues. Anytime you go for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. When they begin, to, they begin to minister to you and you begin to speak in unknown tongues, what you are actually doing is that you are praying in an unknown tongue. Jude 20 says, building up your most holy faith. What? Praying in the Holy Ghost. So, as the Holy Ghost gives you a chance, you begin to pray in tongues. And then, as your spirit man begins to connect with the Spirit of God, you begin to speak in tongues. Speaking in tongues is, is prophecy in another language. And prophecy is you saying the mind of God the way it is. Like you see, Papa, De, Papa Debo, you say, there's somebody here. Uh, that is telling me now that by tomorrow morning you are getting 470 million hmm. in your account. Somebody else will say that in tongues. Kapush Katelia to somebody that understands tongues. That kind of speaking will be able to what? Exactly. Will be able to interpret. That's why we have the gift of speaking and the gift of interpretation of tongues among the you know spiritual gifts. But there is another one that is called praying in tongues. Every believer, whether whoever you are, you must be able to pray in tongues. Because when you pray in tongues, you are not speaking to man, you are speaking to, to God. God. But when you speak in tongues, it is God speaking through you. You understand? Know there's a difference. So when God speaks through you and he speaks and your spirit man can catch it and is able to, you know, voice it either in tongues or as a prophecy. Prophecy is like speaking in tongues in your own language. That is, you are saying something, you are saying the voice, you are repeating the voice of God in your own language. Maybe in Yoruba or in Swahili or whatever language that you speak. And you are able to say it in your natural dialect. That is prophecy. <laughs> some can prophesy in tongues, that is speaking in tongues, and some can prophesy in their natural language. But the one that every one of us must be able to do is what? Pray in what? In tongues. Sorry. When you are baptized by the Spirit, when the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit is in you, He prays for you and He voices in tongues. So you can pray, you can initiate, you can initiate tongues. You can initiate tongues in what? In prayers. You can initiate it. But some people are a bit confused when they say, ah, how would this person not be speaking like that? Just be fear. How would just God just speak anyhow? Yes, it may not be. What they are doing may not be speaking in tongues. It is praying, praying in tongues. tongues. Every child of God, born again, born of the Spirit, must be able to pray in tongues. 
You're able to pray in tongues. Because the truth is that when you pray in tongues, too many things happen. Too many things happen. Too many things happen. I want us to write this in you know, a few lines down. And I believe that it's going to be a blessing to us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Number one, unknown tongues are supernatural means of speaking to God. That is praying in tongues. Unknown tongues are supernatural means of speaking to God. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. For he know, for he who speaks in tongue does not speak to men, but God. For no one understands him. In the spirit, he speaks mysteries. Speak mysteries. When you want to deal with the devil, when you just start kasha, kapari, atasuzu, atisiakia. When, when you say such things, the devil, the devil knows that you are not talking to him. <laughs> the devil knows, inside him will be like, oh, why did this guy, this guy has reported me to Baba? All those sons of Skiva, all those sons of Skiva, they didn't understand. If they had known, they would have busted in prayers in tongues. The, the, the devil would not have been to say anything. That's why he said, Jesus, I know him. If he had come here, he would have reported me to Baba immediately. Uh, Paul, I know him. If he had come here, he understands the mystery of speaking in tongues. He would have reported, but who are you? Can you please report me to Baba now? And they were like, in the name of Jesus, and Paul, the name of Jesus, that Paul preached, you cast your hand. They sent the guy, pounced on them, tore their clothes, and sent them out. <laughs> God will give us understanding. Amen. I say God will give us understanding. Amen. Number two, praying in tongues help you to pray about things before they happen. Praying in tongues help you to pray about things before they happen. Because you are praying to God. You are speaking to God a mystery. Romans chapter 8 verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our weakness. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought to. But the Spirit himself maketh intercession for us with groaning which cannot be what? Uttered. This you can't say with natural language. You begin to utter it in the Spirit. You begin to utter it in the spirit. Number what? Number three. three. Speaking in tongues helps us to stay conscious of the presence of God and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Speaking in tongues helps us to stay conscious of the presence of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God that makes all things happen. You are conscious of it. You are conscious of it. You are conscious of it. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. You, you, you are conscious of the Spirit of God. John chapter 14, verse 16 to 17. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it sees him no, he, because it sees him, no, knows him. For he dwells with you, and we what? Be in you. you. Before he was with them. But now he will be in. with you, and also in. in you. That is what makes redemption powerful. That is what makes being born again powerful. Being born again and speaking in tongues is not for sure. It's not for sure. I have to tell many of my students in school. I say, it's not for sure. It's not for sure. It's, it's a demonstration of power. It's a demonstration of power. And most times, they, they work well when you do it in secret. You go out in the middle of the night and you begin to blast. And you begin to speak to him that is invisible. And you begin. It's not for disturbing people. It's not for disturbing people. Real prayers, you don't do them in the presence of people. Real prayers. If you are really serious with your prayer, you will go into your secret. That's what the Bible says. You will go into your secret place. And you begin to, you begin to, and God begin to, you begin to slot it out. Not to God, you know. Like, like, sincerely, you don't, you don't pray to make people know that you are a prayer warrior. You don't know. Too many people don't even know that. Some people came to my house, they don't know that I even pray. I said, they don't know that type of face. But the truth is that when you touch iron, have you seen iron before? Iron, electric iron. Mm. Plug it 
and on the switch and leave it on the table there. It looks very innocent. Ah. It looks very innocent. It won't be removing smoke. It, except if the iron is bad. But if it's correct iron, new one, just leave it there. It will look as though nothing is happening. But don't touch it. Oh, you see, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, what do you call it? Electric wire. Just the other side, plug it and leave the naked one on the ground. If you look so innocent, as if nothing, you just go there. But what is this? Stupid wire in there. Huh? <laughs> and certain things, certain things will flow through you. <laughs> you will know that, yes, this is not ordinary. Man. When a man of God, when a child of God is plugged, they become dangerous. Hmm. But too many children of God are not plugged. How do I know you are plugged? You are always emitting tongues. Tongues means you have been plugged and the switch is on. So anytime you are speaking in tongues, there is any devil that touches you at that point, get shocked. I'm telling the truth. This they may look like fantasy, but that's the truth. That is why you see innocent looking people. When you try them, if you look at all the pastors, most of the pastors is in Nigeria, a good, a, a good number of them, nobody looks very innocent. Like Pastor here, Bishop Abu, Bishop Abu, Bishop Abu. Many people think Bishop Abu. Because of the women as does, they do, they think yeah. this was just natural cards. This church is not praying out church. But God asked all the devils in this time. I have met one before. Mm-hmm. You see, I have a list. He told me clearly. Clear. He said, but then he went, Konoma. <laughs> and what happened to me one day? I was coming from that time when I was coming, I was coming to church. So we got to Uduri and these area boys stop the car and then they got so they now the driver was like what's the problem now they started beating the driver I was feeling angry in my spirit that was happening here so I now what I now opened the door and I stood at the door and I saw to there what did the man even do to you people what's your problem don't you know that I'm late to church he said hey 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 oh God leave that to it's not like that your place uh, uh, you mean that uh, okay oh my you're not dancing Oh, uh, your 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 chest is just open and swallow the the this thing and then uh, you know that people are talking no matter what this that place don't come and that one for us uh, okay, I just go 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 that's how they do it sincerely even me I was looking at myself I was like what just happened he said me I will remove and then <laughs> that means they tested too many they tested some people too many people have been tested they know that these guys they are not normal. <laughs> Then, so you don't have to look like a rugged idiot to be fair. Just get plugged. Simple. Simple. Just get plugged. Don't plug the wire and leave it there. Just get plugged. And how do you get plugged? Charge up. Build up yourself in your most holy faith. What? Praying in the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you the truth. It's the strongest form of prayer. It's the strongest form of prayer. Tell your neighbor, get plugged. Get plugged. Tell your neighbor, get plugged. Get plugged. Number what? Number four. Number four. Praying in tongues protects you from contamination of the world. Praying in tongues protects you from the contamination of the world. First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 28. First Corinthians 4, 28. Keep silence. That is just an abridged version. Keep silence in the church and let him speak to himself and unto God. He's talking about the women. He said, you keep silent in church and let him speak to himself and unto God. Speak to yourself and to God. So if you look at it, it is not to disturb others. Speaking in tongues is not to disturb others. You don't allow people to sleep because you want to speak in tongues. No. Most times in my house, I from the contamination of the world. Okay. That's why most times when I want to pray, serious, I really want to die. Maybe I, I go out in the middle of the night and I slot it out because prayer battles, you know, that's why when people want to fight, even in real world, world wars, they don't fight it in the middle of the town. They don't fight it in the middle of the town. They go, to the they, go they have where they call battlefield. They have where they call battlefield. The people that are not casualties 
are those that are living around the battlefield. <laughs> yes, this Ukraine versus Russia. They had a battlefield where they were shelling. Yes, there were some that were mistakenly entering into that's why anytime it enters into a city, they will report it. Because it's not it's supposed not to be so. If you want to fight, go to the battlefield. Go there and then you know exchange bullets. <laughs> Number five. Praying in tongues stimulates your faith. Brain in tongue stimulates your faith. But you beloved. Building up yourself on your most holy faith. Praying in what? Mm. In the Holy Ghost. So tongues don't give us faith. They actually what? Build our faith. How does faith come? Faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's why you have to always be in church. Or to be in meetings where they can boost your faith. When you are always in meetings where your faith is being boosted. You see your faith just come alive. There are some things that you are that's entering you now. That is helping you to make a better decision. That even Satan, when they hear you tomorrow, they will know that yes, one more. This one is another level. Fire is coming on you like never before. Amen. I say fire is coming upon you like Amen. never before. Amen. I say fire is coming upon you like never before. Amen. That's how it is. So the, the, as a child of God, you must develop your faith. And how do you develop it? By praying in what? In tongues. Pray in tongues. I'm telling you to pray in tongues. You have to pray in tongues more than you pray in a normal language. Pray in tongues. Because it gives you too many things. Too many things. Too many things that we can't number. There are too many things. I have 12 of them here that, you know, that are so powerful. But I'll just give you these um, five. Because we don't have time. I pray that God will give us understanding. I say from today, tonight, I want tonight, from tonight, 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock. Just get somewhere that is between you and God. And just kabash in the spirit. What are you doing? You are telling the Holy Spirit, train up my spirit man. <laughs> train up my spirit man. Anytime you are kabashing in the spirit, when you are you know, praying in, in tongues, what are you doing? You are telling the Holy Ghost, train up my spirit man. When your spirit man gets trained, I'm telling you, you will say certain things and people will be afraid. I'm telling you the truth. You will see certain things and people will be afraid. I remember those days when I was still very active on, on Facebook, especially during the elections. I don't know why. Anytime I just post one thing, too many people will attack me. They will challenge me to, to the point that one was even saying that, I know where you, I know your church. I'm going to come. We are going to beat you up. <laughs> why? It, it doesn't, it's not normal. Because when you, when you say certain things and people react, it's because something is in your words. <laughs> That's why from that time I had to, you know, I'm very conscious of what I say online. <laughs> it's not everything. If you are too easy online, it's because your words are not... Uh, wow. It doesn't carry with. <laughs> it's okay. If you are too easy, you are telling me, Barry, your head is not correct. And nobody will matter. Nobody will say, why did you say that? <laughs> it shows that your words are too cheap. <laughs> your words are too cheap. What am I trying to say? Power your words. Power your words with what? With speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues. It's not for speaking, it's not only for pastors. It's not even, it's not even for pastors. It is for the children of God. As a pastor, as an apostle, as a, uh, as a, a prophet, as a teacher, as an evangelist, those five things, those five ministry uh, instruments, they are actually tools in the hands of God. And nobody goes to a workshop to go and to go and to go and admire the tools. Have you ever gone to a carpenter shop and I say, ah, I like this your nails. That this is your nails. Ah, I like this saw. Oh, I like this hammer. Ah, this hammer is so nice. You don't care about them. They, you don't even care. You don't even. Recognize that they are there. What are you interested in? In what those things are made? Your full screen, the chair, the table. Ah, I like this chair. I like this table. Ah, I want this cupboard. So nobody admires the tools. God is not interested in the tools. He's interested in what the tools are produced. In what the tools are produced. He said for the perfecting of the saints. 
So God is looking for the perfected saints, not the tools. But what is it to why would God keep the tools safe? Because he needs them to produce the products. <laughs> so he will always keep his, he will carry his toolbox and keep them safely. That is why when you touch the anointed, God deals with you. Because he needs them to create a perfected saint. That's why touching a pastor is dangerous. Abusing a man of God is, 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 is because when you touch them, you are touching his tools. So there are tools in the hands of the Almighty, but we are products in the hands of the Almighty. Produced by what? By the tools. So you don't talk to the tools anyhow. No matter how good or bad the tool is, it's not my business. I don't care about them. I don't care. Because sometimes the people you call bad pastors. Hmm. Can say nonsense that will make sense to you. That's true. That's one dangerous thing about men of God. A man of God may say nonsense that when you hear it, you're like, ah. But if you look at it again, in another dimension, it may minister to you because messages come for two things to teach you what to do and to teach you what not to do. do. So a madman will teach you how not to behave, a sane man. We teach you how to behave. So if you want to learn the opposite of what your teachers are saying, go and meet a fool. So when a fool, a fool will give you proof that will help you understand that what your teachers are saying is correct. <laughs> so if you look at it, you can learn from everybody. You can learn from anybody. You can learn from everybody. I'm telling you the truth. You can learn. I went to a church today that on a normal day I would not have um, uh, gone. I'm not. Not discriminating, but certain. I'm not a fan of those kind of churches. But the truth is that when the woman of God was praying and said certain things, she said some things that struck a chord in my spirit, and I turned those things into a prayer. That Lord, this thing now, 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 and I began to pray in tongues. So I have gotten my blessing. So whether you are in the midst of fools or you are in the midst of the wise, you must be able to turn whatever it comes to you into wisdom. Into wisdom. And that is what the Spirit of God does. So when you, in, in case you don't understand what they are doing, just kalam, rotash, kate, yaru, shata, as, as we begin to say, the Holy Ghost will take over and begin to work, to put uh, light where it's supposed to put it, where uh, voidness, and I guess we just can't come in. I guess we just can't come in. I guess. Because the Bible says the first word that came to Adam and Eve was be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and have what? Dominion. So Five things. Five things. So that's how God works. I pray that God will give us understanding. Amen. I don't know if we have learned anything. Amen. And I pray that God Almighty is going to reach out to us like never before. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I say in the mighty name of Amen. Jesus Christ. I say in the mighty name of Jesus Amen. Christ. I want us to rise up to our feet even as we close in this seminar. Except if we have any question. You said you are going to teach us five minutes of speaking in tongues. You said the mama. I am giving you the ones I need to give you. Praise God. That's why I said I can't teach everything today. Praise God. That's it. <laughs> So you keep coming. So when you keep when you keep coming, you will grab they are even supposed to be twelve. But I give you five. Praise God. So any any question? Do you have any question? Yeah. Eh? Okay. No, what I said, uh, understand what I meant. I said something when I started talking about speaking in tongues. In the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve heard God clearly. Clear. That means the spirit of man and the spirit of God were in a koinonia. There was a koinonia, there was a there was a communion between the spirit of God and the spirit of God. So every when God when God sneezes, 
man will catch a cold straight. That the way God sneezes, man will catch cold straight because they we are their spirits we are united. Their spirits we are united. If you think Edward God told that woman in the garden at the well, he said the time is coming when you you we will no longer be worshiping in Jerusalem or anywhere. He said because they that must worship God. They will worship him in what? In spirit, in spirit and in truth. And in truth. That means the spirit of man and God will soon come back together. In the beginning, in the garden, their spirit was one until Satan came and created sin, separation. So there was a separation from man and God. And from that time till Jesus came, man lost consciousness of the spirit of God. Because all we knew as the spirit of God is prophet, king. All those people, all those intermediaries. No man as an entity, man as a, an individual. Did you understand the spirit of man? Did you understand what it means to hear from God direct? Because there was a separation. But when Jesus came, you will see that the same thing that happened to Eve happened to Jesus. Did you notice? Because in the, in, on the mount, after 40 days fasting and prayer, they said Jesus was hungry. And then Luke chapter 4, from verse 1 to uh, 21, he said, Jesus was hungry, and then his mind came into operation and said, if you are the son of God. And if you look at that, the first thing that Satan told Eve was, did God say, you should not eat of this hand. So when he said, I don't say you should not eat of this but the one in he said, if you eat, he said, you shall not surely die. Because God knows that the day you eat of it, you shall be like God. But how did God create them? In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, He said, and God said, Let us make man in our own image, after our own likeness. So, how will somebody be telling you that you will be like what you were already? Hmm. You were already created like him. You were already created like him. Somebody is not telling him you will be like what you already are. <laughs> so Adam he fell for that trick <laughs> and lost. But Adam, during Jesus' own, if you read from verse 23 of Luke chapter 3, when Jesus was going to pray, I mean to be baptized, they said Jesus was going to be baptized, pray. And when he got to John the Baptist, they said John the Baptist looked at him and the heavens opened. And a voice came from heaven. This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Yeah. God declared Jesus his son. The same way he declared Adam and Eve like him. So, Satan, when Satan came to Jesus, the first question he asked is that if I had when they declared, when John the Baptist was saying it, not long ago, that you are the son of God, if you are truly the son of God, turn this stone into what? Ah! Satan, Jesus knew that this guy is, is a smart devil. <laughs> and then, see the answer. What did he tell him? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. word. Do you know why he did that? Mm. And if you understand this particular message I'm about to talk about, you won't feel sick again. Mm. You won't feel sick again. If you need sickness, come, you'll be able to challenge it. With this mystery of God's sake. In Genesis chapter 3, towards the tail end of, the, of Genesis, God caused the ground for man's sake. I mean, yeah. he, caught, he looked at man and told man, The ground is cursed for your sake. He caused the ground for man's sake. He now said, Dust and thou. And not to dust, thou shalt what? Return. He called man dust. So, and anything God calls, that is what that thing becomes. So, man became dust. That is, the body of man became what? Dust. But if you now look at another thing that happened, he looked at the Satan or the serpent, and he told the serpent, he said, From today, on your belly will you grow. And dust. Shall be your meat, your food. Mm. What did you tell man? 
Dos diamonds. And not the dos that shall return. And he told Satan, the serpent, he said, From today, dust. You see, you shall call on your belly.